Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. So, as a part of uh, network software uh, programming and as well as uh, systems or uh, kernel uh, programming, I have discussed a uh, couple of uh, data structures, the most important data structures of um, and kernels uh, network software programming or uh, SK buff data structure and as well as uh, net device data structure. So, as a part of net device data structure series, I have shot a numerous count of videos. Okay, so you can have a look uh, in case if you are uh, new to the same, so that you can uh, walk through the uh, basic intro part, its uh, relevance in the Linux kernel and uh, stuff like that. So, to summarize, uh, the net device data structure is uh, quite important because uh, it is what holds the you know port information. So, essentially, if you do you know in the command prompt if config or something like that, it is uh, what being fetched from net device data structure. And whenever you do if config, if there are some uh, hidden or any ports which are down or something like that, it may not be displayed in the if config command. In that case, if you do minus a, it's going to display some more additional uh, you know port uh, instances. And all these things are what uh, stored in the net device data structure. Usually, the net device data structure will exist like a list. So, as you add new interfaces and uh, remove any interfaces, uh, this data structure is uh, dynamically managed. So, what I mean to say is, uh, let's take for instance, uh, I got this uh, NIC card. As you can see here, I have this uh, couple of uh, NIC cards. Uh, one is a uh, very old, it's almost 10-12 years old wireless uh, NIC card. At that point of time, you used to get at this uh, type, of, type of form factor. Okay, This is a D-Link uh, NIC card. It is quite popular at that point of time. Uh, this uh, is a wireless NIC card uh, interfaces with a USB 1 or USB, I don't think so, it is USB 2, it is a USB 1 standard or something. So, it is quite old and quite slow. So, whenever you have any uh, NIC cards uh, or network interface, uh, whether it is a physical one like this or else if you create any virtual uh, port, whenever you do the same, the net device data structure uh, will create a new node and in this case, I have another NIC card. In this case, it's a USB 3 to gigabit NIC card. So, either uh, this type of NIC card or else you have a PCI card or else it's an inbuilt motherboard NIC card, whatever it is, uh, it will be populated and uh, in the case of inbuilt NIC card, as you can see here, uh, once the system is booted, it is going to be persistent, so the entry is always there. But in this case, let's assume we plug this, you know, wireless NIC card. So, once you plug the same, as soon as you plug this NIC card, the kernel will... Uh, come to know and uh, it will create this uh, net device uh, you know data structure instance okay so if you go here you can see here the nic card have come up and it also got this ip address uh, via dhcp from a wireless router okay so this is what so this instance uh, again is a net device data structure instance so if you are very new to the same you can watch all those series and uh, you can gain some you know knowledge and as a part of the series some of them i have also covered various uh, sample uh, code with which uh, with the kernel uh, module you can uh, list uh, the net device data structure instances and various other stuff and in this episode i would like to discuss about some of the settings which you find in net device data structure uh, with respect to the ethernet uh, uh, you know settings which you can find it in a specific file so this is what we are going to discuss in this episode right so if you hop on here you can see here this is the net device data structure so you can find it in the include linux net device dot h so if you see here this care name is nothing but the port name so whatever you find in this place this uh, local host or else uh, this uh, eno1 whatever the name you find it is nothing but uh, it's the name of this uh, you know member variable of uh, net device data structure okay and other than that it will have other certain uh, uh, parameters about state and other stuff again uh, some of them i have covered in the previous episode so uh, i don't want to uh, do anything written in this episode which i have discussed earlier this episode i would like to discuss about a couple of interesting uh, ethernet specific settings uh, where you can find the apis and also the initialization part of those uh, corresponding settings okay if you go down 
uh, as you traverse down it will have settings like mto and other uh, you know parameters as you can see here so you can see uh, all these uh, things do exist and apart from that you may have uh, the mac address and uh, and other stuff so sometimes they may refer anytime if you are going through uh, systems uh, code of uh, Linux kernel or something. Uh, sometimes the MAC address they may refer as a hardware address, or sometimes they may refer as MAC address and uh, stuff like that. Okay, so that's what you will find here. And uh, and of course you can spoof the MAC address. And again, this is something I have discussed in the episode uh, in a specific episode. Okay, so you can see here it has uh, these Ethernet uh, specific uh, uh, member variables or settings. So some are initialized, some you can change and stuff like that. So one you can change is like MTU value itself you can uh, support if the nick card supports a uh, jumbo frames you can support uh, i mean you can increase the default empty if the nick card has uh, connected to some kind of van network and it has uh, lesser empty uh, you know throughout that specific router channel then you can decrease your mtu and this is something quite often uh, isps uh, do tweak these settings uh, based on their other uh, van technologies so they may have something else they may do some type of weird encapsulation and in that case they may change the mtu settings and sometimes the hardware itself in the van technology may support a lower mtu and in that case they generally tend to change their microtech routers or whatever they have uh, to adjust as per the mtu and then uh, so that uh, the fragmentation ip before fragmentation whatever it happens before itself and it will send the packets accordingly with respect to that intermediate mtu uh, you know values of that network path so all such settings uh, you can see here is uh, been initialized over here you can see here dev and uh, header ops these are various ethernet header operations it is uh, linked over here and apart from that you can see here device type and uh, in that case you can see here it's mto use is uh, initialized to data length and uh, minimum mto maximum mto and other stuff so uh, you can even dereference uh, these values so if you open here uh, this contains uh, i mean these are initialized uh, in uh, include uapi linux uh, if underscore ethan uh, dot h okay so this is the file i feel both of them are in the same file but in a different location so you can see here you have this uh, ethernet uh, address length which is six bytes because of ethernet uh, uh, hardware address length is six bytes and sometimes again some data link uh, layer technologies may have or layer 2 technologies may have a different address length in that case they need to define the same sometimes it may be eight bytes or whatever it is okay so that have to be defined so ethernet is a popular standard so often these days we don't see much of any other technologies versus ethernet but other than the ethernet you have also ppp and other stuff okay so so you can see here uh, other than that uh, you have this uh, these are uh, total octets in the header of course it is uh, destination max source mac and the type or whatever you get so totally it is equal to 14 bytes sometimes it is needed to do some offsetting of uh, your uh, you know parsing of the uh, packet so you have this uh, field here so you can use this uh, macro directly rather than you defining that offset and then doing some kind of you know pointer dereferencing suppose if you want to dereference a pointer or a buffer skb data or something and instead uh, de uh, starting from ethernet header you need to parse the ip header then what you can do is skb data plus you know eth underscore h line or something you can provide so that once you do that the moment it gets that bytes out of it will be correspond to skb of uh, you know ip header field or ipv6 whatever it is okay so this can be used and other than that you can see here data length and other stuff so here you can see here this is where uh, ethernet uh, uh, minimum mtu and max mtu and uh, stuff like that so uh, in general uh, we classify jumbo frames uh, can be around uh, 9000 bytes and stuff like that i think even in my system this motherboard gigabit nic card has this mtu value of 9000 bytes so i don't think so this is something i have defined it is just uh, default you know which it is existing so as you can see here these are various kind of settings are being initialized and you have the corresponding uh, hash defined macros okay 
So you can see here uh, minimum MTO they define as uh, 68 bytes. It should be at least a minimum of 68 bytes uh, as per the Ethernet technology. And in the case of uh, standard MTO, you have this uh, 1500 bytes. Uh, and uh, that is why ETH data length is initialized over here in the case of generic MTO value. 